guys. It, I think all of like the key people that we are aware of needing to be here are here from our shop. And I do think this first part of this uh, is planned to be um, open, so I think you're going to be streaming it, right? Are we good to, to go? Okay. Then uh, we'll go. We're glad uh, everyone's here. This is our uh, actually our fourth workshop uh, meeting in this year's IRP, and uh, we do have. I don't know if we have. We may have a few people that are new that not everybody knows or sees. So I always think it's wise for us to introduce ourselves, and then we'll see if we can flow through our agenda. We will have a pause kind of when we move from. Uh, public information to uh, confidential information and uh, we'll obviously get you a copy of this uh, slide presentation. Our really smart, good guy that knows how to follow all of the Utah rules, we let him go on vacation today, so uh, he's going to have to help us get it that way under Jen's direction, but we can go over the slides and do all of that. I'm Barry McKay. I'm with uh, Crystal Gas in the regulatory area. Carol Revelt, Public Service Commission. Eric Gordon with the division. Gavin Mengelson, Office of Consumer Services. Uh, Will Schwarzenbach, Questor Gas. I'm Jennifer Clark, I'm here with the meeting Questor. Brady Rasmussen, Wexpro. Uh, Alex Moyes with Wexpro. D. Hugely, Wexpro. Tina Faust, Questor Gas. Brett Bacher, Questor Gas. Eric Martinson, PSE. John Harvey, Public Service Commission. Joseph Fallen, Commission. Lily Mark of Bell, Questor Gas. <laughs> We're going to talk about the time. <laughs> Jordan White, PSC. Adam Lavar, PSC. Yankee Tuttle, the division. Jeff Martin, Kelvin, the division. Adam Field, the division. Steve Snarr, attorney representing the office. Bela Vastag with the office. Marty Powell with the division. Scott Nelson, Cluster Gas. Robert Moore, uh, AG attorney for the OCS. Glad you're here. All right, thank you uh, for doing that. It's probably for our guys. I want them to be able to put a, a face with a name because we told a lot of stories about some of you. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll uh, jump into this. We've had these three meetings already, and I think the portions of these slides that are uh, public, uh, I my understanding is I think they are in the commission's hands now. I think we may have missed or a little slow in getting some of it. I, if we're wrong on that, let us know and we, uh, we'll get those to you. But uh, we've had those meetings. We kind of want to give you a little bit of update. Uh, this is obviously today we're here talking about our request for proposal for our gas supply. We're prepared to do that. Also, we had as agenda item the Wexpro drilling plan for this year, hence we got our Wexpro folks. We also want to give you our plan. Uh, we, we, this is still on schedule, uh, 27th of June would be our technical conference uh, after we file our IRP. That plan is going to be the first part of uh, June. And some of you have noticed that sometimes the first part is anything before the 15th. Uh, we'll end up seeing where we uh, get on that, but uh, we're having a lot of fun putting a lot of this together this year. It's been a good year and a good process. Um, <clears throat> today, I'm going to give you a quick little merger update. I think Will's going to uh, give you a, a update on some of the things that have happened that we've talked about in our previous meeting related to contracts that we've been reaching out to third parties uh, to complete as well as uh, planned um, continuation of our 241 contract with uh, Prestar Pipeline. Then we've got a heating season review as well as the uh, RFP results as well, and then we'll finish with uh, Wexpro, it's this part about uh, right here that we turn into being confidential. That said, um, we uh, filed, I hope people received, we're, we're doing everything electronically now, so I hope there's some nodding that they did receive it, but we filed our first uh, integration progress report on the 17th, it was due on the 15th, but 15th was a lovely Saturday, and so we took full advantage of that fine weekend. Uh, but we did file that. I uh, look for the opportunity to have feedback with it. That's actually a report uh, according to the merger agreement that uh, we are, quote, working together with the parties. If there's things that people think we missed or you'd like further clarification, this is a 
term, I could describe it as kind of a work in progress, give us feedback, we're trying to report as we were supposed to be doing. Uh, the announcement that happened on the 6th that we were here with, I can't remember which uh, workshop meeting, was the identified name change, which isn't just affecting Questar Corporation, but it is affecting all of Dominion. We have a little bit more data that we wanted to give you on that. We had uh, identified that there would be a shareholders vote on the 10th of May. That's still on task to have. Then, the clock clicks forward as follows. On the 12th, our legal folks across all of Dominion will be filing to legally change names. And we want to show you what our legal names will be changing and then some that will only be changing to be doing business as. So, <clears throat> Questar, Dominion Questar Corporation, which that already happened as a change after the merger, will be changing to Dominion Energy Questar Corporation. Questar Pipeline will be changing to Dominion Energy Questar Pipeline. Those are the legal name changes. The rest here is just doing business as, okay? So, we, Questar Gas, legal name is still going to stay out there. There's going to be no change on that. But we will be doing business in Utah and Wyoming uh, and called Dominion Energy. And you'll see when we file our tariff with you, we'll call it Dominion Energy Utah in that title up above. When we file it with Wyoming, it'll be called Dominion Energy Wyoming. And we'll start to interface and have all of our communication with our customers as really Dominion Energy. Wexpro is going to stay, their legal name is going to be Wexpro Company, but they will be doing business as Dominion Energy Wexpro. Now, all, that's happening probably beginning on the 12th. We think we can have all of our ducks lined up that by the 5th of June, we plan to have a press conference uh, at the Questar Center here downtown. And we hope to have that signage on the outside of our building so that it has been changed. And this is actually a, a tremendous amount of detailed light items. I picked a few of them that will be happening or begin to be happening on that day. But we'll have the press conference, the signage, hopefully outside the building's changed. We'll have trucks there that will have Dominion Energy on it. We will send out, beginning in June's building, an insert telling everybody, hey, our name's changing, we'll send out emails to those that get email bills. But it's just the statement that our name is changing, the bill still will show Questar Gas for that month. We're going to start TV and radio spots, hopefully we'll have outside signage on billboards. All of our employees will begin answering the phone, Dominion Energy. And you guys can give us a call to see if we do that. And, uh, Look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. You're, you'll probably want to put that as a tickler on your team to do this that day. And uh, so any of you who are following us on Twitter, watch out for the new handles. Okay. Then that month will go forward. And then beginning on July 3rd, that's when our first cycle bill will start to go out. And we will have Dominion Energy on the bill. It's amazing as I've gone through this, I've been in the part of the task force that's doing it, is today's world has such a large amount of junk mail and people recognize things and when we're worried that one will, will get spammed when we send them uh, their bill as it relates e email wise. They'll see a new envelope that they've never seen, they'll toss it and our goal is to still have the customers be paying their bills. <laughs> so uh, we need to make sure that one happens but that is where we wanted to share that here because we recognize that there could be confusion in some people's lives. These are the dates that will happen. Division could get calls saying, hey, what's this new company or is this really out here? Is this true that that's what's happening? So at least to give you a heads up, those are some of the things that you um, would be aware that would be happening. Any questions on that? You can get really good discounts on Questar gas material from our company's store right now. I mean, you guys are looking for sweatshirts. I see that there's none there. We'll come take over our contract update. Obviously, if you have questions. Well, it's a cubicle. Come on, that's our store. Well, you're going to disallow those costs. Hey, we're out of a rate case for three years.
<laughs> All right, so I, I was gone last month, so I figured I'd, I'd come back at this meeting and give you a quick little update as to, to where we are. Um, so we, we talked last time, or Kelly I think did, about which contracts we were getting ready to sign, you know, um, moving forward with. Uh, the first one is our new contract. It's actually a capacity release contract. We talked about it in the past confidential meeting, so I didn't want to put too much detail up there on that. But that is a, a seasonal release of, of Kern River capacity uh, for 83,925 deck therms a day. That, again, is seasonal, and it's a 15-year contract. So we really have 33,000 deck therms in November, the, the 83,925 through, uh, or, sorry, 33 in November, December through February, we have the 83, and then 33 again in uh, March. Uh, the next one is uh, we extended our existing Questar pipeline contract, the 798.902 for 10 year term. We also move forward with a proceeding agreement for a new contract for 100,000 ectherms a day uh, for the Hiram expansion. That won't go in until 2019. That will be a, an eight-year term on that because it really will match up then with the, the rest of the capacity. So then it'll be um, combined on the same term. Uh, and the last one is uh, we extended our 988 contract for clay basin capacity. That's one of the three contracts we have for our clay basin capacity. And that's a five-year term. And in record time, that's it. <laughs> it is record time. <laughs> I mean, we could pause for a while. And just <laughs> yeah, we could go over some vacation slides. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Scott Nelson, and I provide the variance report data that comes to the commission quarterly. And uh, this is kind of a live update of what's going on. This is this is a colorful view, version of the variance report. So, here is heating degree days. Uh, this is last year, starting in June. And that is a normal line of, of heating degree days that the company uses, and that's what the IRP said the normal would look like going forward. Actually, the, the IRP didn't say that. That was the number we put into the IRP. And then that is actual data. Those are heating degree days throughout the year. So cold days, warm days, uh, you know, winter thaw in here, wear your, your long underwear up here, and that's how the, the winners uh, moved along. Um, we thought it was kind of interesting that the normal underneath and the actual on top seemed to line up pretty well. So the normal's over 30 years, and then this is this year's actual. So we're kind of impressed how, how they line up. And then down here on the end, that grade in. So the model's looking forward and saying because the model has normal temperatures in it, we're going to continue to have normal heating degree days. And of course, that will vary uh, with, with actual, but that's what the model says will happen going forward. So this is heating degree days. Uh, this is a, a view of our cost of service gas. Um, when I did this presentation for my coworkers, they didn't like the dates that I had down here. They insisted that I have just months. So that when I talk about this up here, it makes more sense. So this is a five-year history. The top numbers up here are the maximum we've received from uh, Wexpro over the last five years. And then this lower level is the minimum we've received from Wexpro over the last five years. And then an average in the middle. So that's, that's historically how things have looked by month over the last five years. And then this was the IRP number that we put into the model last year. Wexpro gave us these volumes. They said this is what uh, they thought they could produce and give to Questar Gas. And then this is what actually happened. In the fall, they were a little bit over. And then in December, they fell a little bit under. And then this is actually the new IRP data moving forward. So their projection moving forward, the last part of our IRP year and into the new IRP year is a little bit above what last year's IRP said it would be, this green line. This is a cumulative line that's to show how many, how many decatherms we received from Wexpro over the course of the year. And then this is the actual line of what we received, the red line on top. And um, we had down here when we had extra volumes over here, the line moves away from what we thought we would have. And then down here when we didn't have quite as many volumes, the line has come back. And here we're just about exactly where we thought we would be at this time. 
cause the spikes in there for the actuals? That one there, I think, is related to the peak day that we had in January. We lost some, some plants for part of the day, and there were also some well freeze offs during the day. Yes, uh, repairs on the Burbank Bur 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 plant. Oh, well, those three will know exactly yeah. what the story is. Yeah, trail and cane creek production down because they were doing repairs on the Burbank Okay, then, then that spike there, I think, is January 6th. And so on January 6th was our day that we did our interruption. And do we know if we had a wells freezing off on that day, or was it stopped because of the plants that was on the plant? There was a plant there. So that one is. Now the other ones that we had was their uh, maintenance. The Tesoro plant, yeah. yeah. But that, when all the plants went down, it created an exciting day. Who operates those plants? Tesoro. Both of them. We're a part owner, we're 28.5% owner, but they're the operator. Of, and they used to be QEPs. Of the Vermilion. No, 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 no. We, we own the Vermilion. Of the, uh, which plants were they that were lost on that day? Okay, but there was other plants that uh, got froze off. On the sixth, we had issues with Black Sport. Black Sport. Yeah. Okay, and I don't. So who uh, who runs Black Sport? <coughs> uh, Tesoro. Tesoro does. Okay, and that's. I, I just knew there was more than one plant that went down. Did that answer your question? Uh, index price. So last April, when I ran the IRP, this was the index price for the forward strip from April of last year. And then these are actual prices by day throughout the, the heating season. So prices were above during the first part, a little bit below there. Actually, that corresponded to November uh, 1st, and I believe that's right. And that was uh, um, the day when uh, we started to be full in clay, and so maybe that's related to storage filling up across the country. Prices fell back up during the winter heating season, and now we're, we're back to this point here. And then this is the, fo the forward strip currently from April. This is our clay basin inventory. These blue uh, bars going down represent injection into clay. The red lines represent withdrawal from clay. And this is what the model said to do as far as filling clay and pulling gas out. Um, one thing, make what? Oh, too fast. Sorry, first day with the clicker. So, right up here, uh, the model had suggested that we fill clay to its maximum. And as, as uh, time went on, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I wanted to point that out while you can see that, that that's a, a maximum fill in clay basin. And this yellow line is something that we ran every week of the year. So, every week we would add, we would update the prices. And we would update historical temperatures that would happen during the week. And every week that would tell us how we wanted to model clay basin. So right here in the fall, it, it follows the line pretty close. And then here it departs a little bit. And then it departs a little bit more over here. And actually, the blue line is how, we, how the, the basin was filled and ran this year. One of the reasons for leaving a gap up there is so that if we had some warm days uh, in November, um, we would have a place to put put uh, additional cost of service gas that, that came to us. And uh, we've actually made a change to the models to follow that going forward. So we always leave a little bit of breathing room you know, in case we get more, in case we have a warm day and need a place to put our extra gas. So just a pause button here. We, we report, as you know, on a quarterly basis all these variances. <coughs> our report is doing variances from the green line. So I want people to, but it was actually feedback here from this group as we talked about our ability to be able to run this model on a weekly or monthly basis, and that we began going and doing this. And so we'll be running this on real-time basis. And I don't know how you might want that to be reported or looked at. It's, it's hard because it's not formal. But know that that's, I don't want people to get confused. Our variance that we're going to be reporting from is the green line. But we are going to be targeting this most updated one as we go forward. Yeah, so to give a little more detail, we, we kind of went in and we have an operational meeting every Monday morning to kind of look at weather, what's coming, and, and we meet with our gas control, a um, bunch of people internally, and what, what I asked Scott to do was kind of run his model every week and tell us what the model was telling us to do based on, on where things were. So where that yellow line and the green line diverge is, you know, like he said, if your prices are different, um, if our cost of service 
um, projection is updated. It's basically updating that model knowing everything it knows now. So it's the same model that ran the green line but with new information. It's the newest best information and that's what we were kind of on a week to week basis really planning our, our week based on is what is it telling us to do right now. Not, not what did it tell us to do back you know in, in May or June when we had the best data then. It's what, are we, what is it telling us to do with the best data now and we kind of weigh it with what's going on now. We weigh it with what what the original IRP said and, and we use that for operational decisions which is why you kind of see us towing more of the the, the yellow line there than, than the green. Um, so I think that, that that's what and, and kind of overall what we wanted to do here today was because Scott's been doing this all year long is when we thought about doing the the heating season review we said well it really makes sense to incorporate that and talk about what actually happened through the heating season and really the whole IRP year and tie that back to what we what we said it was going to be in the model. So that's why the heating season review has kind of turned into this, you know, you know, even more detailed variance report, but it's it's really reporting the heating season versus what we we kind of projected in the model. Now, hopefully it provides you a little more information. Okay. So then moving on down here at the bottom, we have a Again, what the model says, what we need to do going forward, uh, current prices, and whether it's saying not to do anything until we get to the first of June. So, and an important part there is what we found by doing this and, and rerunning this model every week is it's it's very very uh, sensitive to the price forecast, the upcoming price forecast. So, so as you saw, that price forecast kind of goes up and down, and and he has another graph that he shows us and some more, but kind of shows us what that price forecast looks like every week going out for the remainder of the month and then what the, the forward prices look like and when when the price drops down or I'm sorry when the price goes up it has us really not putting much into clay basin in this situation if that price goes down at all to a lower price it's going to want us to put gas into clay basin so we kind of keep running it that that line going forward may very well change where it says don't put anything in there for the next two months if, if prices go down and it looks advantageous for us to store that gas and put it in clay basin, we will do that. So, just How much does that go down? It's, it's pretty sensitive. Uh, so if, yeah, a few pennies will make the difference. Yeah. Really? But, as he explained that, I go, whoa, now wait a minute. We, we do have Wexpro, mm -hmm. we, and we don't want to incur incremental costs as it relates to shut-in. And we'll smile at that man and say, yeah, and the model has all of that in there too. And so it is taking into consideration all of that on whether or not we should still, knowing all that, choose to buy. If it does, then we'll move forward with that price. And, and we look at it in a, a couple graphs that you see here. We're showing a historical view of everything. We, we take a, a, an overall look at everything, and I'll, I'll show you that graph when, when he gets to it. But that's a historical one. But. So this is kind of the same sort of uh, graph related to the aquifers. The blue is uh, injection into aquifers, and the, is, the red is withdrawal from the aquifers. And then this is the uh, IRP line, what the, what the uh, model suggested we do with the aquifers this year. And then this is actually what we did. So here, when we had an event and we had to pull gas out to meet demand, and that shows that the dip there, and then immediately, as soon as we were able to, we put the gas back in which brought it back up to this level, which is above the green line, kind of where we want to keep it until we get uh, out of the, the heating season. Now, a, a key with this one is you don't see very many spikes at all in that green line. That's because the, the, the aquifers in particular are really our peak shavers. So those are there for, you know, meaning, you know, spikes in demand, meaning spikes in price, stuff like that. And when you normalize everything in the model, you don't really get any of those spikes. You don't get price spikes. You don't get... Um, you know, temperature spikes or anything, it's all normal temperatures. So, so you'll see more ups and downs, just like you do there on that December 6th event. Um, but we do, you, you'll see where we withdrew. January 6th. January, what did I say, June? You had us in December. Oh, sorry. Uh, still December 5th on my mind, I guess. <laughs> that was uh, a good year. You'll see, but we, when we do withdraw for a few days because of a cold weather event or a price event, then we'll, we'll usually inject it right back in so that they're back at that full level so that we still have them if we have another event. But you don't see much fluctuation in the in the IRP model for that because 
it doesn't see the, the spikes that they're there to, to really meet. And then the last little part of this graph is this gray line here, um, indicating what the, we should do with the aquifers moving forward for the last two months of the IRP year. And then this is the combination graph. We have, a, we have a similar graph in the office looking forward. This is looking back. So there's the demand line. This is actual demand, the kind of demand we had during this last, this is the demand that we had for this last heating season. And the blue bars represent gas received from Wexbro, cost of service gas. The purple represents uh, the base load gas that we actually used. The green is peaking gas that we had under contract from the RFP process that we actually used. The yellow is spot gas, also to meet demand that, uh, um, that we used to, to meet our demand. The red is withdrawal from clay basin. And you have to look really close to see the green up here on top. That, those represent uh, withdrawals from the aquifers. This is injection into clay basin, these red lines below. And again, if you look close, it adds some green lines. Those are uh, injections into the aquifers. This is how we actually ran clay basin this year. And then this is how we ran the aquifers this year. So, so like Scott said, we, we generally look at this graph as an overview on a you know, go forward basis. We put this one together with some, some history. It's not, it's not perfect. I don't want you to take away that this graph is perfect. I mean, there's, there's fuel and stuff like perfect. that. <laughs> it's, we really just wanted to show this for illustrative purposes. So, so yeah, you'll see the lines don't perfectly match up there. But really the idea here is you, you see our demand and you see how we're going to meet the demand. We look at this very same thing going forward on a year or two basis every week to see, okay, based on, you know, instead of just taking a one month or two month look at it or the rest of the IRP year, we really are looking one or two years forward at this to see what overall kind of at a high level it's doing, the, the model is doing with all of our supply in order to meet our demand. And this is just kind of a good illustrative way to look at it. So I asked them to put this together going, going back just to give you an idea. Before you leave that one, can you give me an idea why we purchased gas in uh, November, October? Uh, the model told the us peaking. to. Prices were low and the model told us to. So the prices were low and you injected it and that's So remember he showed the price graph where he down. said Remember he said showed the price graph where it said that uh, um, storage was full across the country so yeah. those prices yeah. took a dip. Well, when prices took a dip, the model started telling us to buy gas to put to into clay some. basin. It said buy it when it's low. So that's what we did. Smart model. It knows stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? It doesn't. No, but it jumps out at you. You're going, hey, wait a minute. Why are you doing that? It does, yeah. But you can see our, our injections down there below the line, the, the maroon color there, yeah. also increased at the same time. We were injecting it, putting it into storage, filling up our storage with it, and because prices were low at the time. Okay, thank you. Pink. And for an almost perfect graph, that's a nice one to end on. Thank you. <laughs> so it's time that we need to go into confidential. I think it is. Well, actually, this slide's okay, but uh, but isn't this what we asked for? No, this is results. Yeah, we, we better. This is results. Mm -hmm. Confidential? Yeah. yeah.